Shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. I'm Captain Soraya. And to my side here, Officer Ahu. And we want to welcome you to 15 minutes with the captain. Okay? So today, our topic is a good wife. Okay? Uh, give me Proverbs 18, verse 22. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Findeth a what? Findeth a good thing. Findeth a good thing. Okay, read on. And obtaineth favor of the Lord. And obtaineth favor of the Lord. So, in order to find, you have to search, okay? It ain't just going to fall in your lap, okay? So it says, whoso findeth a good wife, findeth a good thing. Is that what it said? Yes, sir. All praise to the Most High. And I say again, to find, you must search. And when you search, you must know who and what you're searching for, okay? A good wife is what a man wants, okay? That's what he's searching for. All men are searching for a good wife. If their spirit is right, okay, let me say that, all right? A repentant man is always searching or should be searching for a good wife, okay? A good wife also, let me make this clear now, a good wife also needs a good man, okay? So don't fool yourself. It works both ways. Is Are, are we equal to each other? No, we're not. But good it needs good. Understand that, all right? So give me Romans 12, 1 through 2, all right? Romans 12, 1 through 2. And especially for you women that's trying to find a good man, okay, a law-keeping, a discipline, a, a commandment-keeping man, a, a leader, okay, that's very vital for you, all right? Let's read on. Romans 12, verse 1 through 2. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. I beseech you, brethren, okay, that's looking for a good wife. Read on. By the mercies of God, uh -huh. that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That you present what? Your bodies a living sacrifice. Okay, so therefore, with that being said, brothers, you have to present yourself to the Most High God. Your life is no longer your life, okay? You have to give your life unto the Most High God through the Spirit of Christ, okay? That you present your body as a living sacrifice, read on, Holy, holy, okay, acceptable uh -huh. unto God, uh huh, which is your reasonable service. Which is what? Your reasonable service. Read on verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. And be not conformed to this world. You got to come out of that world, okay? You got to get your mind renewed. You got to get your spirit right, okay? You talking about you want a good wife. Well, you got to get yourself right too. But let's read on. But be ye transformed ah, by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Is that it on that? No, sir. Read on. That ye may prove what is that good. So you have to prove and show that wife what is good. She don't know what good is. She think the brother out there on the street selling crack got a, got the the the, the uh, in his in his uh, pimp mobile with the with the. 20s, the 22s, I don't know what they're rolling in today, but, you know, they out there blinging, you know, you think that's it, okay, you think that's good, no, that's not good, you got all these baby, baby mama drama going on, that's not good, but read on, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable uh -huh. and perfect will of God, find that perfect, that susceptible will of God, that's what you need right there, okay, Give me Sirach 7, verse 26. 7, verse 26. The book of Sirach, chapter 7, and verse 26. Uh-huh. Has thou a wife after thy mind? So, when, brother, you come in and get your mind renewed, okay, you're going to be searching for a good wife. you you got to be a good man. Read that again. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Have thou a wife after thy mind? Okay. Read on. Is that it? No, sir. Forsake her not. Forsake her not. Okay. Don't treat her like she ain't nothing. You got a wife that's after your mind and you have the mind of Christ. 
And you falling after Christ? That's what you want, okay? Let's read on. Is that it? No, sir. But give not thyself over to a light woman. Don't give yourself over to no light woman. A woman that has no sense, uh, no common sense that God give her, okay? That's very vulnerable to everything that's said or everything that she sees, she loses it, okay? A light woman, you don't need that, okay? Let's see. Give me, uh, is that it with that? Yes, sir. Give me some rocks, uh, 26 and 23. But understand, brothers, <laughs> if I see you and I see your wife, she should reflect you. Okay? She should reflect you. So read Sirach 26 and 23 for me. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 23. Uh-huh. A wicked woman. Whoa, a what? A wicked woman. God knows we don't need that. Read on. Is given as a portion to a wicked man. Is given to a portion of a wicked man. If you wicked, she gonna be wicked. That's what it's saying. Okay? Is that it? No, sir. Read on. But a godly woman. Oh, but a godly woman. Read on. Is given to him that feareth the Lord. Is given to him that feareth the Lord. That man is keeping these law statutes commandments. That fear God. He ain't going to be out here doing all this foolishness that you see out here in the world. Okay? Is that it on that? Yes, sir. All praise. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and 9. Okay? Please ask it for now. We're starting to roll a little bit here. Okay? 15 minutes with the captains. We may run a little bit over, but we're going to try to keep it within that vicinity. Appreciate y'all. Hope you're learning through these classes that's the 15 minutes of the captains that they're putting out. Okay? It's the edifying to build you up. All right? Read on. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. Bring it out. Two are better than one. How many? Two. Are better than so one. So it's not good that a man be alone. The scripture says two are better than one. Okay? Two are better than one. A man is looking for a good wife. A righteous man is looking for a good wife. It should be looking for a good wife. Okay? Is that it? No, sir. Read on. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For they have a good reward for their labor. A husband. And a, a good husband, a good wife, labor together, that's going to be a beautiful reward for them, okay? It can come even through your own kids, okay? That's a beautiful reward, okay? The blessing of the Most High, when we see the, the husband and wife come forth, you see them, they can be a good example for others. That's a good reward that, that, that resonates amongst the, all, the body or amongst the nation of people that they want that same thing, okay? All praise the Most High, is that it? Yes, sir. Give me Amos uh, 3 and 3. The book of Amos 3 and 3. All praise to the most high. A good wife. That's what the topic is, okay? But nevertheless, don't forget, you still got to have a good man. Read on. The book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 3. Uh huh. Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So what are we going to agree on? We're going to agree on right here. Okay? The Most High God's Word. That's what we're going to agree on. That's how we're going to walk in these law statute commandments that Most High ordained for His people, the children of Israel. We are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. I hope you know that. Okay? Is that it? Yes, sir. All right. Give me uh, Matthew. Book of Matthew 18, verse 19. Yeah, the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, and verse 19. Uh -huh. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth, if as two of you shall agree on earth, husband and wife, walking in the unity, keeping the law, statutes, commandments together. Okay, read on. As touching anything that they shall ask. Ah, oh, go ahead. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Man, that's a good reward. That's a beautiful thing there. Did y'all hear what that scripture said? Read it one more time. Again I say unto you. Again I say unto you. That if two of you shall agree on earth uh -huh. as touching anything that they shall ask, uh -huh. it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. All praise to the Most High. That's good to hear that. Okay. Give me uh, Sirach 25 and verse 1. Book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 1. The book of Sirach, 
chapter 25 and verse 1. Uh -huh. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Okay. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, mm. a man and a wife that agree together. There again, you cannot get away from coming together in unity. Okay? One mind and one spirit. Okay? Husband and wife, you become one flesh. Okay? Do you understand that? When you come together with that man and with that woman, you become one flesh. Okay? Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. That's how it should be. That's how I was ordained for the most high God. Okay? Give me a Sirach, uh 26 verse 1-3. through three. The book of Sirach. Chapter 26 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. Blessed, oh my God, is the man that has a what? A virtuous wife. A virtuous wife, read on. For the number of his days shall be doubled. So the number of his days shall be doubled. I mean, he, can, he will live long, not stressed out all the time. Matter of fact, let me give you a definition of virtuous wife, okay? Or the word virtuous, okay? The word, the definition of virtuous, having or showing high moral standards, righteous, good, upright, okay, right-minded, clean, law-abiding, okay, blameless, just, honest, for this is honorable. Do you hear that? It's honorable. That's virtuous right there. When you see that woman come forth, and understand this, when we say virtuous, we understand it is a process. It's a process, sisters, just as well as with our men. It's a process of us becoming men, not just men, but mighty men of the Most High God, okay? It's a process for us all, but we could, should be able to see you progressing, becoming that good wife or that virtuous wife, okay? All praise to the Most High. But let's read on. Verse 2. Uh -huh. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband. She rejoices her husband. She ain't always talking down on him, okay? She ain't speaking bad on him to other, other sisters, you know, in the body or to the next door neighbor. She rejoices her husband. She, she proud. She look at the positive things of her husband. Despite that he has flaws, he not, may not have it all together, okay? But read on. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. He shall fulfill the years of his life. Now, that's one thing I definitely love. I love my peace, man. You take my peace away from me, you're going to have problems, okay? A man, when he comes home, he just loves his peace. He ain't about a whole bunch of bickering and biting and arguing and fussing. If he is, he out of his mind, okay? But let's read on. Verse 3. A good wife is a good portion. A what? A good portion. Say, read that again. A good wife? A good wife is a good portion. A good wife is a good portion. Okay, read on. Which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. There it is. Given to the portion of them that feareth the Lord. That feareth the Lord. The real fact of the matter is a lot of sisters do not want good men. They prefer these type of brothers that don't have goals, that don't have a good job, that don't have drive, that don't have ambition, that aren't good protectors, that lack in these areas where a man should be plentiful in. They go for these type of men instead of a good man because when they have this type of brother, they can tell him everything he's doing wrong. They can belittle him. They can disrespect him. And they like that. That's why when they were talking about it, they were laughing. They were giggling. They were giving each other high five. Like, yes, I talk to my man like that too. I have to tell my man that too. Ha ha ha. They think it's funny because they like the idea that they they feel superior over their man. They like feeling like they are in control of him. They like that position of authority, of power. They like being able to say, get the fuck up off my couch. I'm about to kick you out of my house. You need to do this. You ain't shit. You ain't. They like being able to talk to men like that. They like that. But if the role was reversed and they did have a good man, now they can't talk to him like that. They can't be disrespectful to him. Now they actually have to watch their mouth. Now they have to level up. Now they might actually have to be submissive. Hold up. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why women prefer those type of men over good men. Because a good man is a man that is plentiful in all these areas where these other men lack. 
the brothers that you do pay attention to, they lack in these areas where good men actually have the stuff, you know, they have the goal, the, and the ambition, the drive. If they don't have a lot of money, they're working towards it. You know what I mean? They are protectors. They are leaders. They they provide guidance and all this, the, the knowledge and the strategic planning and all this other stuff that comes with being a good, strong, masculine black man. They have all of this. So now he can actually turn around and tell you where you lack as a female. As a feminine woman, he can say, you're not feminine enough. You're not nurturing enough. You're not affectionate enough. You don't, you're not sexual enough. You don't have sex enough. You know, you're not sensual enough. You're not creative enough. You don't teach your children enough. You don't cook decent meals enough. You don't keep this house clean enough. And if a man tells you that now, oh my goodness, he is controlling. He's a misogynist. He is a chauvinist. But it's okay for you to, to point out everything that a man does wrong. It's okay for you to tell him what he needs to do. It's okay for you to point out all his flaws and tell him all the areas he lacks as a man, but a man can't do that to you. That is a problem with black women, and we need to stop that. It, it is a huge problem. And a man that is a good man, he has standards. He's going to want you to do better. The same way you're going to want your no good brother to do better. He's going to want you to do better too because he has options. And that's another thing, another reason why sisters don't want good men, because good men have options, and they understand that these women that they, that they, they, they these options, they, they're good women. But the brother that doesn't, that's not a good man, his options are not, women. they're the type of woman that you would say are no competition, right? So you don't have nothing to worry about with him. You feel like he only going to be with some type of bummy chick, you know, you think. But with a good man, you know he has some real good options. So you got to level up. That means you got to do some work with yourself. You have to change some things. You have to improve in some areas. You have to elevate. And sisters don't really, they're not trying to really work on nothing. This whole feminist movement have made women feel like they're just perfect. Nothing they do is wrong. It's all on a man. So when you do have a good man, that's like, oh no, you need to work on this. You need to work on that. They don't like that. Now they feel inferior. Now they feel inadequate. No, they like to feel like they're perfect. They like to feel like they're the ones in control. So that's why they go for this man that don't have nothing, that doesn't do all the things that they want them to do. They lack standards. And I'm not even going to say they lack standards. They may have them, but they prefer this man that doesn't have the thing, doesn't have everything going on. Because they just like being able to belittle him and they like being disrespectful because they can't disrespect the good man. They can't talk down on him. Is that it with three? Yes, sir. Jump to 14 and... Through 16. Verse 14. Uh huh. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Boy, now you, yeah, you, you I can lean back on that one. Read that one more time. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 14. Yeah, call that scripture out. A silent and loving woman. I hope y'all write that scripture down. A silent and loving woman. That, do that mean we don't want to hear you talk? No. But do we want to hear you run your mouth all the time? nagging, complaining, you know, some of y'all need to go over to some of these other countries and see what they deal with. You, you'll see some, you, you, you think they, you wonder why they be nagging and, 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 and cussing and carrying on, but they're not even doing that over there. But read that again. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Oh man, that's true there. Well, I can marry them now. It's a gift from the Lord, a silent and loving woman, when a man come home from work, he's been dealing with the stress of the world, okay? He's dealing with trying to take care of his household. He's fighting out there. With, everything is against him out there. And he come home and a wife is nagging. That ain't, that ain't going to fly. I'm telling you now. But a loving wife, baby, how, how was your day? Baby, you, you want me to run you some bath water? Baby, I fixed you something to eat. You want a plate now? Baby, can I? Look, come here. Let me you rub your feet. A loving, show the love. He don't want to come in and you showing hatred, you know, like he's some nigga, you know, frowning up at him. You know, he out there busting his tail for you, you know, giving his life for you and the kids. Be a silent and loving wife. Speak to him with love. Speak to him in kindness, okay? Build him up, all right? It's a time and a place for everything. And that time is not the time to be bringing that to your husband or be a good wife. Okay? Let's read on. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Oh, praise. Read on. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Oh, there's nothing so much worth a mind well instructed. Okay? 
a mind well instructed, okay? And, and husband, that plays a big part on how you lead and guide in your household. Read on. Verse 15. Uh-huh. A shame-faced and faithful woman. A shame-faced. A woman ain't always up in another man's face, always trying to be seen, okay? A woman ain't always uh, uh, vainglorious, okay? Uh, read on. And faithful woman. And faithful woman. A man can go and travel and go out here and risk his life, be gone one or two weeks, sometimes longer than that, but he knows his wife is a faithful woman. That means a lot to a man, okay? Read on. Is a double grace. Oh, my God, that is a double grace. Read on. And her continent mind cannot be valued. Oh, praise it. Her continent mind cannot, you can't value that. You cannot value that, okay? You can't put no price on that, okay? You wonder why you mess around and say something to another man's wife, he ready to go, go off on you. Because <laughs> you can't put a price on that. Let's read on. Verse 16. Uh-huh. As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven. Oh, when the sun rises in the high heaven. Y'all know how beautiful that is. Read on. So is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. So is the beauty of a good wife. Okay? So is the beauty of a good wife. That what? The so, is, so, is the beauty, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. So is the beauty of a good wife ordering her house. A man come home, listen, he been working all day. All the temptations out there in the world is coming at him, okay? He's carrying the spirit of, of Christ on him. You don't think women come after us? You don't think women going to come after your husband or that man? You fooling yourself. Don't fool yourself, okay? Because we have to fight off these temptations as well. But when he comes home, have he seen all these, these women out here trying to exhilarate the beauty, okay? Because they don't know true, true, true beauty, okay? And he comes home, and a wife, she looks like she just got through uh, 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 fixing pancakes, okay? No, he ain't coming home to see that. He want to see his, his beautiful wife. He wanted to take the stresses off his world and the things that he had to fight or women coming after him out there in the world. That's when you play that part at too. When he come home and you looking like you just been, been beating the carpet all day long. Come on. Get in the spirit, sisters. Read that again. Beauty. Uh, Sirach chapter 26 and verse 16. Uh -huh. As the sun when it arises in the high heaven. Right. So is the beauty of a good wife. So is the beauty of a good wife. Oh my God. When you come through the door, that wife looking beautiful, smelling good. Read on. In the ordering of her house. In the ordering of her house. That house is clean, spick and span. You come in, grab a cup. You ain't got to come in the house smelling like, like she's been sitting around eating corn chips and dip all day. Smelling like feet up in there. Come on. You, hey, coming in the house smelling fresh and clean, you know. Man, that's a beautiful thing. A woman been ordering her house. She been sitting back eating bonbons all day, watching the daytime soap, or watching Atlanta Housewives. Man, he was like, where the hell am I at? I'm in the wrong house. Don't no man want to come home to that, okay? Let me move on, because I can stay on that for a little minute. So, give me Tobit, chapter 8. Did we finish that, 16? Yes, sir. All praise. Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6 through 7. The book of Tobit, chapter 8 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. For a helper and a stay. Read on. Of them came mankind. Listen, a helper and a stay. I mean, listen, you're going to go through things, okay? You're going to go through things. Be that helper. Be that stay. Be that support, okay? But read on. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Uh huh. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. An aid like unto himself. Okay? So men, this, that wife, that good wife is going to pattern after a good man. Okay? Read on. Verse 7. Uh huh. And now, O oh Lord. Oh, 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 Lord. Say that again. And now, O oh Lord. Oh, Lord. That's how you got to say that thing. Read on. I take not this my sister for lust. I take not this sister for lust. Listen, out in the world, there was a song by uh, Belle Biv DeVoe, a song called Poison, okay? Never trust a big butt and a smile. That's what they say, okay? You brothers taking these women for lust, you're going to be sadly disappointed. 
you're going to be sadly disappointed, okay? Don't take this woman just for lust, okay? Read on. And now, O oh Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, uh -huh. but uprightly. But what? But uprightly. But uprightly. He said, I take not my sister. First of all, that's your sister, okay? You wouldn't just allow, allow anybody to do anything to your sister. Read on. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. That we may become aged together. Okay? So you out there looking for that sister for the lust, believe me, those things going to deteriorate. Okay? All those, those bodily fashions that you look for, that you enjoy, at some point in time, those things going to deteriorate. Okay? Over time. Even you yourself, it's going to deteriorate. Okay? But you want to take this wife Okay, this good wife, this virtuous wife, okay, that you yourself, as a good man, leading God in your household, that you may become aged together. Listen, I'm Captain Soraya. Appreciate the 15 minutes. I hope you enjoyed the 15 minutes with the captains. To my side here, Officer Edward. Hey, and with that, we say shalom. Shalom. of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.